just first of all, I wanted to say thank you so much for the outpouring of love that I received this year from the board gaming community. Uh, you guys really helped me with my Instagram page. I got a lot of good content out there. Um, you guys asked for certain references to things and I, I hope I met and exceeded your expectations. And here you are again pushing me to go above and beyond. So here I am with my first YouTube channel. Um, this is Chic Out, so welcome. And um, I hope it's a great year and let's just get right into virtual gaming. Okay guys, today we're gonna talk about virtual gaming. The reason my husband and I like to do virtual games versus doing a tabletop um, scenario is we like the social aspect of people coming over and playing a board game. So we feel if we do a virtual game, we still are getting that. We're not missing out being able to like have a sidebar conversation about, you know, my three-year-old shoving cheese in the couch today. Um, <laughs> so what we do to accomplish this, both groups need to have a computer or tablet of any kind, something that you can log into Zoom or Google Meet with. Now, not to say that Zoom and Google Meet are the only options out there to do a web hosting virtual experience, but those are the two that have worked the best for us. Um, I'm gonna assume for this video that everyone knows how to get an account with both of those. If not, just let me know in the description below and I'll do a follow-up video for you. Today, I wanna get into the gaming aspect of virtual games. So to do this, every player needs to have good communication. You need to have, you need to be able to talk and communicate appropriately with the people that are sitting virtually sitting across the table from you, because there's going to be a lot of pieces, moving pieces and elements that are going to go into this to make it an enjoyable experience. So some of the terms you're going to hear me use, the invisible players, those are the people that you're gaming with that are sitting on the other side of the computer. When I talk about board game maintenance, that is um, the moving pieces of a board game, the pieces themselves, drawing cards, laying tiles, anything like that. That is game board maintenance. The master board is whoever is going to have the, the if you will, the master board that everybody on both sides of the table are gonna be viewing. That is gonna be your reference point. If someone needs to move a piece or for, thinks they forgot to move a piece, they are gonna reference the master board, okay? So with those three terminologies in your brain, um, let's go through how you set up. So for us, we set up a laptop and we set up our webcam. The laptop is gonna be hosting the other, the invisible players. So that, that way they can see us, we can see them and so on. Our webcam is also gonna be hooked up to our computer. Um, we picked up a Logitech C900 series if you have, it, it, it boasts 1080p, the free Zoom account will only let you stream at 780, but if you pay for your Zoom account, you can get up to 1080, just, just to let you know. Uh, we have a free one. I think it comes across clear enough. We may upgrade it at some point, but for now it works just fine. We hook that up to either our chandelier so you can get a bird's eye view of the board, it works great for those bigger games that we're sharing with the invisible players like Take Rococo or Lisboa or Vinyos, any of those big table, Feast of Odin, any of those big table eaters, just so they can see all the pieces and have that point of reference to look back to, right? So the other thing is we'll hook it up to one of the dining room chairs, that arm that you see. Uh, we picked that up at Amazon for it was very inexpensive. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but I'll leave a link for it for you down in the description so you can view it if you want. That little arm is fantastic. It lets us make um, everything straight because that drives me absolutely nuts. Or <laughs> um, I don't like the invisible players to view the game board backwards, like if it's flipped. If you don't, if you're not able to move your webcam around and they have to see it upside down, that drives me nuts and it drives our invisible players nuts. Because what that means is if you're hosting with a webcam, um, usually the webcam will flip the image. So there are ways to flip it back, but just the easiest way for me is to just set up the webcam so the, the presentation of the game board is as if you're looking at it, right? Like right side up, all that good stuff. So once you get all that set up and you get logged into Zoom, 
whoever's going to have the master board is going to do setup. So um, just for example, let's take Catan. We're going to set up the Catan tiles around the outside. And then we are going to disperse the tiles randomly, right? So the players who are playing, the invisible players with us are going to match what they see. They're going to match those tiles. And then where we, wherever we start the numbers, they're going to do the same thing. They're going to match it. So they're going to reference that master board that we're hosting on the webcam and make sure that their board looks like ours. It also works great as a point of reference throughout the game because we're all human. Um, if they miss something, they can quickly look back and say, oh, I forgot, I forgot to put down this settlement. Hold on real quick. Let me just put this down. Is the road going this way? Fix, right? Easy peasy. The other thing for setup of games with the master board is who, if you have um, cards to draw out, so remember in Catan we have those um, settlement cards. Any card that's going to be drawn as if it's, you know, like um, say an, I'm the map, our side's the master board and the invisible players are drawing a card from our draw pile, right? We're going to pull that card out and we're going to have everybody around the table close their eyes and we're going to show that card. So the invisible players can look through their draw stack and pull out the card that was just drawn for them. So we, this is total player, whatever you prefer. We do it this way. We originally were trying to figure out a good way to do drawn cards like that. So we originally were just having people draw out of their own decks and we decided we didn't really like that because what if someone gets in Catan, for example, there's two of those take everything bonuses and those were popping out really quick. So we're like, we can't do this because there's a limited amount of those cards, right? So we decided whoever's going to be the master board who's drawing everything, we're going to take from that draw pile. And then the invisible players with um, their maintenance side, they're just going to be looking through their stack and pulling out that card. So let's go back a little bit to when I just said maintenance. So maintenance means if you are not being the master board side, you automatically are going to be the maintenance side. You're going to be doing the maintenance for your board. So that means anything that's getting drawn out or anything that's moving, you're going to correspond to move it. It's not exactly going to get played like it's being played in a normal game. Now, what do I mean by that? So let's take Splendor, for example. In Splendor, you have the three rows or Ticket to Ride. I'm hoping a lot of you have played Ticket to Ride. We'll do both. But in Splendor, there's those three levels of cards, right? And in normal gameplay, you have this stack of cards and you draw out the cards that are going to be face up. So that's going to be the master board's job. They're going to play. Remember, they're going to play like normal. Whoever the invisible players are that are going to be doing the maintenance side of things, we're not going to be the ones to draw out those cards, right? So we have to be able to find what's being drawn out rather quick because you don't want to... You don't want to slow up a virtual game being clumsy because that just ruins the whole experience. So what we do to prep if we're going to be the maintenance side is we take each level of card. So in Splendor, the first row, there's only one card of each color that has a point on it. So we put them all in color order. We do all the red gems, green gems, blue gems, so on and so forth. And the ones that have the one points, we put them on the back, the very bottom of the deck. That way, if our master board side is saying this is the card that just got drawn, they're going to say it's a blue gem with a cost of two green, two red. We can quickly look through, pull it out, and then we're matching our side of the board with the master board. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you take that same example for Ticket to Ride, so Ticket to Ride, the master board is going to be doing the draw pile, right? The five train tickets with their, with their deck. So they are going to tell, and so on the maintenance side, we have all the trains lined up in color stacks. So when the master board says this is um, a black train just got drawn, we can put out a black train. And if we draw blindly from the deck, they'll do that. Everybody close their eyes. Everybody draw from the deck. Show us what we picked up and we'll pull it from the corresponding color stacks. Um, card games that are also like that, you do that with Betrayal. Um, you do that with Istanbul for the bonus cards. Ticket to Ride, you do it for the bonus cards to start in the beginning. For the maintenance side of Ticket to Ride for bonus tickets, we put all our bonus tickets in the, um, the scoring numbers. 
like the bonus numbers, we put all those in order. So if someone shows them, we can just flip through the stack real quick and be like, okay, I got it. Um, the biggest, the trickiest game we have played with virtual gaming, because any game to me, you can at least try it once with virtual gaming. It just depends on how much maintenance you want to do, right? So the, the biggest game that we ever did with virtual, or hardest game I think that we ever did with virtual training was the Great Western Trail. The maintenance side of that was pretty rough. Um, we had really good communication with that game, but still things just kept getting messed up. So we, I think we need to try it again and try and figure out what was best for that. So just for a little bit of example, with Istanbul, whoever's setting out the master, the master board, right when you're drawing to refill the market with the tents and um, the hazards, they all have to go out in certain spots, right? And they're all different colors. So that one was just a little tricky with communication. We had to be like, okay, this hazard came out. It's this color and it's going over in this spot. <laughs> Same thing with tents. Tents are blue and green. And then um, we had to put out, we don't ever set up player boards with invisible players, but in, with pieces like the Great Western Trail, you have to put out their discs. You have to put out their trains. You have to put out their tiles. You have to move their cowboy, right? So um, just with stuff like that. With, um, with Great Western Trail, like I said, that was probably the hardest one we did just because there's so many moving pieces. I think we could do it better. Um, I would love to try it again. I'll keep you guys posted if we try it again. I'll pop that one right up here. Um, but other games that we have tried, we've done Betrayal um, at House on the Hill. That one actually wasn't that bad. We did the webcam as an eye in the sky up on the chandelier so you could see the board being built out. Um, we did the maintenance side of that game. So the master board was pulling out the tile. We would we put our tile stacks in order of the house. We did basement, ground floor, um, upper floor, and if you're playing with Widow's Walk, the roof. So um, we could just quickly look through those stacks and put them out. That one wasn't that bad. Um, trying to think of what else with the other like tough I thought splendor was going to be way worse than it was but we found a really good way to do the maintenance piece of it so that one worked really well I'm excited to try that again the biggest virtual game that we pull out is Catan because I feel like every house has it that's the trickiest part of doing virtual is you have it's just easier for both both groups to have the same games. But that's pretty much it. That's virtual gaming wrapped up in a nutshell. I hope everything made sense. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to drop a comment down. Um, I will answer it right away for you. And if you like this and you're looking forward to some more content, because I know I am, <laughs> um, just hit that subscribe and like button. And I'll see you guys at the next Cheek Out. Have a good one.